Hello everyone. Welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. This is a super mini mail call. Let's get right to it. We got two packages here. Uh, this one, it comes from your fans. I am led to believe these two are related, which is why I'm opening them up together. Let's see what's in box number one. Mini mail call number 64 at 305. <laughs> Mini mail call 43 at 2350. Um, plus, 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 and happy face. And it looks like here we have a list of parts. RCTP main and stuff here and DC to DC converter. Uh, hmm, okay. Well, when we look inside here, we got some of the uh, Ginger Lemon Harry Bows, which I have mentioned before on the channel that I liked. That could be what the timestamps are all about. But those seem to be filler for what looks like a ton of parts. Tons and tons. Wow. RCT Pro. RCT, what's that stand for? DC to DC number three. I'm not gonna take these out of the bags because uh, I'm afraid um, there is some organization here. Taking them out is gonna just mess things up. Decoupling. There is so much here, I don't even know. Uh, um, wow, okay. Uh, there's a, th a thumb drive. Uh, we got uh, <laughs> lots of PCBs here. Something in this box. I'm gonna open it and take a look. All right, it's a warning here. Attention. It's not talking about the AT Mega. All right, some PCBs um, from the DIY Mall. And I'll document link here USB ASP, so some type of a programmer, I suppose. And a 9 volt, 2 amp power supply. All right, so that's it for that box. And this is like, this is madness. Total madness, look at all of this. Nothing really makes sense to me. Like I'm not getting what this might be from what's here. All right, so this one says Dent Sucre, which is French for sweet tooth. Okay, um, <laughs> this is, this box unfortunately didn't seem to survive um, or the packing that is. So that's it for the box. Uh, Harry Bow Super Gherkin. Like pickles. Pickles, I don't even understand. I mean, they look like pickle slices, but these are obviously <laughs> really sugary. I'll have to test one of them. Pickle slice, anyone? Oh, those are pretty tasty. Obviously being in a Ziploc bag, that's not the original packaging, um, but it's good actually if they were just loose in here, this would have been pretty Pretty ugly with the way it split from uh, packet or from shipping that is. Hmm. Notice here that it says that this is vegan. Well, that's interesting. So the sort of the gummy gelatin is not the normal animal byproduct. It's vegetable, I guess. These ones here are for sale in the U.S. They're just the standard U.S. packaging, but it is made in Germany, and these are pretty tasty. I think it was Ron sent some of these in previously, or one of my viewers, and I definitely enjoyed them. All right, first I brought up mini mail call number 64 at 305, and let's see what I'm talking about here. It's K by one chips, which is what he sent. Before sending them to me, he says he looked for a way to test them. He found an interesting Arduino project, DRAM Duino, he has a link to it, saved you from one dead chip. Might want to try to whip one up yourself to check chips you currently have in stock. The app does not check the full performance of the chip, but it does check if the chip is bad. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, this this must be referring to the DRAM Duino, which I assume is in here somewhere. All right, and here is Mini Mail Call 43 at 2350. Force and removal, add-on adapters for 144 dims or 30 and 72 pin. So I really need to find those because I have so much of that RAM and it, it really actually, uh, more than once I've gone to use some of the memory that I have. All right, so I'm talking about the RAM check here, which is a donation uh, from one of my viewers in Arizona. 
and it's able to check memory modules, which I have a pile of here on the side, but I wasn't able to check 30 pin and 72 pin memory uh, because those didn't support that right off the bat. So I wonder if somehow this is somehow related to all of that. Clearly all these parts here are for the PCBs that are in this box. So I'm gonna put these parts to the side for now and let's take a look at these PCBs a little closer. All right, let's take a look. Let's start with what's inside of here. So this PCB here already has a couple of components installed. This looks, oh, you know, this looks a lot like Noel's Retrolab had that tester. So this was a zero insertion force socket. I think it goes this way. And I'm kind of thinking there's DC to DC converters there. And there's a screen here, like a LCD screen that connects to that header. And this is that multi-chip thing that does all that testing and stuff. And yes, there it is. Everyone's probably screaming at me. The Retro Chip Tester Professional version 1.2i 8bitmuseum.de. So obviously this is the PCB and then all of those parts that go with this. Okay, and there's a little PCB here that says PSU for SRAM DRAM tester. Pretty sure this is what generates the minus five and the uh, plus 12 volt rails specifically for 4116 DRAM that uh, needs those extra voltage rails for testing because it doesn't just work on uh, standard five volts like, like all the newer stuff. And I guess that, that goes right here. And we have an LM7805, LM7905, so that's the minus five volts. So maybe this doesn't produce 12 volts. Maybe there's already 12 volts on here, I don't know. And then this little PCB here, it says it's the decoupling adapter. Does that go, does that go under here? I bet you that goes under the uh, ZIF socket there somehow. And that allows you to decouple somehow. And there's a USB, micro USB. Oh, I guess that has to be soldered on here somewhere. Where, oh, there it is right there. Surface mount, okay. Okay, back in the bag for that stuff. There's this thumb drive, which I haven't looked at yet. And then there's a bag full, filled, simply filled with PCBs here. Look at all of this. All right, we have a 6502 NOP tester or no op tester. Looks like there's provisions for the Sally, which is the processor in the what, 60, uh, I'm sorry, the Atari 2600. I've talked about these no-op generators before and you can do them on the motherboard itself. It's actually pretty useful when you do that because uh, it tests all the address decoding circuitry on a motherboard. But I think what happens with this is you put the CPU in here, a 6502, and it's just for testing it. Uh, there's uh, eight LEDs here and I guess they go through the various address lines or I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, there's a URL there, I will have to look that up. Okay, we have another PCB here for the, the big tester, and it's also a SRAM DRAM tester, and it looks like it's got some DC to DC converters on it, and I don't know what the difference is between uh, this one here. They look like they both plug in. And it appears there's yet another one of these. Not sure how it works, but there it is. Here's an experimental adapter for Chip Tester Pro. So I guess um, you put pin headers here. Maybe it allows you to connect up your probes directly to the chip or something. This is a PCB for the Chip Tester Pro for testing memory modules. This one says SIM slash SIP tester. So that's actually pretty useful because SIPs, of course, uh, you would just install round hole uh, pin header socket, I guess, and you could plug the SIP straight into here and a SIM would go into a socket that you would install on there. And then this would plug into, obviously, um, the, the ZIF socket on that board for testing those modules. And then this one here says C64 cartridge adapter for the chip tester. Interesting. It would obviously allow you to probably dump the cartridge really easily as well, because I'm pretty sure this has the ability, if you put an EEPROM in there, it can actually copy the EEPROM I thought there was an SD card slot on here, but actually there's not, but maybe over USB, maybe? I'm not sure. All right, and here's the same thing for the Atari 2600, the VCS. So that would be for testing its cartridges. And here's an adapter for testing the 7481 7484. I do not know what either of those chips are. 
And a little PCB here for the 4204 slash 5204. Again, I don't know what those are. Here's another decoupling adapter PCB. It looks like there are two of those. This is for testing the 1702 EEPROM, which I'm pretty sure is the very first EEPROM ever made. Now, I don't have one of these chips handy at arm's reach, but I actually have several of these chips that someone locally gave me here, and there's really no way to use them because they use strange voltages, and I don't have any equipment that uses them, but I also don't even have a programmer that can program them. But I'm assuming this thing can at least test them or read them or something. So it'll be kind of curious once I build this up to be able to um, put those into here and see if they work, I guess. All right, zip adapter. So this will be testing zip memory. Zip memory is like you take a regular dip IC and you squish it together and the pin arrangement looks just like that, sort of staggered and alternating. And here's another one, I guess a slightly larger package. There's different types of DRAM with more or less uh, capacity that use that form factor. All right, this one says Mark 4008 adapter, whatever that is. And we have another zip memory uh, socket adapter here. So it's like there are three different sizes so far. Oh, here's another one. So four different sizes. All right, here's another adapter. It's for the TMS 4050 and 4051. I guess these are some kind of old EPROMs or something. Oh, and there's another zip adapter right here. And then this one here says it's the CDP18U42 adapter, uh, whatever that is, I'm not sure. And here is one that is for the 2513. And the little notes that were in here, just a couple things, it says uh, the AT Mega has already been programmed, latest firmware, if the image doesn't appear, adjust the potentiometer. And then resistor R57, uh, right below the MOSFET, is 4.7 ohms, printed 4.7, don't confuse with 4.7K, which is 4K7. Don't forget to install the three wire bridges and pay attention to the alignment of the relays. Okay. All right, so obviously what this is, along with this stuff here, are all the parts necessary to build this up. And um, judging by uh, how much is in here, and obviously RCT is the Retro Chip Tester Pro, so that explains that. Um, and these are obviously for the various adapters. Like here's the one, the parts for the TMS 4050 adapter. Um, so that's simply incredible. I'm, I'm completely blown away. Clearly this is um, a big project. It's gonna take quite a bit of work to assemble all this stuff. There were a lot of parts, specifically on the Retro Chip Tester Pro, and that's obviously the first one I need to build, what's in this bag right here, because I wanna get that up and running. Uh, and then move on to all these adapters. Uh, clearly, all of those Haribos, uh, I think, are like fuel, AKA if I'm spending long, countless, countless hours working on this, that <laughs> I need a little sugar boost uh, to, to continue on my way. Oh, wow, this is just kind of overwhelming. There's every part necessary for all these various adapters here. Just amazing, TMS. DC to DC converter number three. There's the 1702A adapter, that's the Intel chip. I mean, this is all making more sense now that I've uh, looked at what the PCBs were. Well, I'm a little lost for words at all of this. This is simply incredible. Um, there are quite a few projects of building stuff that I haven't gotten to, like that awesome Commodore 64 diagnostic cartridge that a viewer sent me with all the parts as well. So there was definitely a lot of stuff for me to do ahead of me, especially for rainy winter days when I can't go out and do anything. I think I'm gonna prioritize the retro chip tester first out of everything else because I think I can definitely get a lot of use out of this testing DRAM and other components. I've seen Noel put it to good use on his channel and I thought that would be really cool to have myself. So <laughs> yes, that is gonna be cool. Now, when am I gonna be able to get to this? Not sure. I'm, I'm always trying to produce videos and open packages and stuff, and I don't have a lot of bench space down here in the basement. And this is the space I use for kind of all my work, really, especially while the bench behind me with the TRS-80 Model 2 sort of spread all over it is taken up, and the Atari is still sort of spread out all over the basement on the floor and stuff. So there's a lot of projects I want to get finished um, before I attempt this, but I'm hoping over the next few weeks at least, or maybe the next month or so, I can get to this at least 
and then I can probably start building these things. These are probably a lot easier to build. There's a lot less parts uh, than the main chip tester. So from my fans, for whoever you are, thank you very much for this amazing donation. It's simply incredible how organized all this stuff is. Simply incredible. So that is gonna be it for this video. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons. Their names are scrolling up on the side of the screen here. If you wanna become a patron, you can do so at the link in the description below. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. A subscribe to the second channel would really help out. Comments down below in the comment section. Check out the main channel if you haven't already and you know, all the usual youtube -y stuff. And I guess that's gonna be it. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.